And why is that necessary? Well, truth be told, it really doesn't matter at all. The fact is that no matter what the debate is, everyone has their own opinion and perspective on life. For example, let me ask you a simple question that I'm sure you all have heard before. The glass before you, is it half empty or half full? Every single one of you has a specific answer in your head that you can back with your own opinions and facts. And no matter, pretty much no matter what we say, you really aren't going to sway all that much because that's your set perspective on life. This age-old cliche of half full, half full, half empty is a rhetorical question to show that the same situation can be viewed differently, but that people have a tendency to lean towards one perspective over the other. The half full view gives an optimistic, cheery view of life, while the half empty seems more pessimistic and negative. And today we will be exploring both life perspectives as well as address the issue of the glass itself. And I am half empty. Um, so let me address first off the wording choice, first of all. Okay, so full indicates that the container is completely to its, its optimal level, whereas empty means that it has nothing in it. And the halfway point means that it is halfway to one point or the other. And so, an idle glass, you can assume that if it is being filled up, it is being half full. If it is being half empty, if it is being consumed, then it is half empty. A glass that is just sitting as such, you can assume about this world. And in ending, let me just say that, like I said before, uh, the glass is indeed not uh, not half full since, because since I've given the speech, through the principles of, of evaporation, the glass has deteriorated and therefore it has become half empty. We are not alone. grabs onto the chest, pulls them into a spaceship. Okay, matter cannot transcend other matter. Going through your roof, impossible. All right, that shot, it. garbage. Um, that video, in 1978, a group of three men came forward and admitted to making that video along with several cross circles. Cross circles are made like, can I borrow this for a second? All right, they take a stick like this, and I don't know, like a rope, and they tie it around one end, like so, don't worry, it's not perfect. Like so, put it on the ground, and they move it like that. Well, not like that, but almost like that. And that makes perfect circles. All right, so if you make it with, I don't know, like geometry or whatever, you can make perfect circles that are very, very large. Okay. Um, an induction. Um, and then induction, circles, not circles, UFOs. Um, UFOs are just that, unidentified flying objects. Okay, um, the thing about that is they're always blurs. Why are they always blurs? Because they don't exist. <laughs> they're just uh, spots in the sky people claim to uh, to be convinced that uh, something that it really isn't. So, like, I don't know, glare from something to create that spot in the sky. If you have a digital camera and you took a picture of the UFO, you would see uh, blackness because it can't take in all that light all at once. Um, also, weather balloons, they do exist. They're out there. So his three main points are garbage. <laughs> and uh, aliens don't exist. And you'd have to show me one in person for me to believe that they exist. Well. <laughs> I just have to <laughs> <laughs> that, <was terrible. laughs> no. that we do exist and we are out there. <laughs> so all of you know that this <laughs> is my rebuttal. Me. <laughs> I come from Alpha Centauri, and I'm here to tell you all that aliens are real and they are here and they are coming. We are coming. <laughs> Rebuttal of that. Um, okay. Men in black. 